Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, I get fast but not furious. We begin with a high octane action of jointing and planing wood. You can do this by hand with a hand plane or you can sand it for days on end, but since I have a jointer, I was gonna speed up the process. I had to be careful here, I wasn't really planning on using the initial piece that I cut. In my mind, I wanted to maximize the rest of the use of the log and the initial piece was cut very close to the bark and was going to be scrapped. But after seeing the book matching patterns that I showed you in the previous video, I decided I was definitely going to use it. Since I was getting close to the edge, I left two low spots that I was going to sand away later on. The low spots were far away from any design, so they wouldn't affect anything. Planing of the wood applied only to the top section, and that's pretty much a straightforward task. Just run it through the machine, and both surfaces are parallel to each other. Next, we shift to sanding. Ordinarily, sanding is a task done towards the end of the project, right before applying the finish, but I did it here so that there is no two marks that the CNC had to go through. You can see right here, I'm beginning to dig in two areas of the wood, so those are the little low spots that I mentioned earlier on. The rest of the sanding process is pretty much straightforward, just going up the grid of sandpaper in a left and right and up and down motion and doing several passes on each side of the wood. That way you get a nice clean surface. Uh, usually furniture and any other projects I sand to 320 grit. Uh, however, my writing instruments, because they're handheld, uh, I sand them to 1500 grit. And here we are continuing to sand, more sanding and more up and down, more left and right, up and down, left and right, uh, nothing much to it. The sign is going to be suspended from the sides as opposed to the long edge for two reasons. Uh, number one, the lower part didn't have any material where the eye hooks can be attached to. And as it happened, the only wood material was at the sides. Uh, I'll show you a few images towards the end of the video so that you can see the sign from different angles. Uh, and reason number two is the screw portion of the eye hooks wasn't really long enough to go through the bark and bite into the wood for a stable fit. And having a stable fit is of paramount importance as the sign will be outdoors and exposed to the elements. The additional challenging part is that I also wanted to keep the uneven angles uh, on the sides of the, each piece. So I had to envision a center line of each piece and then drill the pilot holes based on that center line. In addition, that center line is also going to be one of the axes of the CNC. That way, in theory, if everything is based on the center lines, once hung, the sign should be level. Drilling the holes was the uh, time-consuming piece here, you already saw me turning the table of the drill press 90 degrees and then with a level I was aligning each uh, hole so that it drills parallel to the center line. The alignment took the most part probably about uh, two to three minutes for each hole whereas the drilling of each hole was about five to six seconds uh, but it was a good example of measuring more than twice and cutting or in this case drilling once. And of course once everything was done I had to test the theory so I took a piece of chain link and I suspended the uh, sign on the side of the uh, workbench and then I began hiding under the workbench to uh, measure all the distances and take a few update photos for the client. After a few measurement and alignment checks and a few additional checks and further few checks that checked the checks of the initial alignment checks, it was time to take out the CNC. I took out the CNC but it didn't start CNCing right away. Instead, I powered the laser module. And this is the good thing about the Snapmaker. It has interchangeable modules that you can easily switch between in a matter of minutes. You might be wondering why I turned on the laser. The answer is simple to check the size. I spent some time making cutouts out of paper. The cutouts included different size variations of the outdoor graphic, different font sizes for the names and different font sizes for the site number. Now to give you a bit of a background, initially when I talked to the clients the lower part of the sign was going to be 7 inches wide and 3 inches high. 
and so the font size was based off that smaller uh, board size. Now the lower section is much bigger, but that doesn't mean the font size should remain the same. Uh, when I'm doing a custom job, I like to consult with the client uh, because they will be the ones who will end up with my work and I want them to be happy with their purchase. Having those cutouts really showed how the layout is going to be. I know it added a bit of time to the project, but with such unique wood, I didn't want to rush. It's going back to what I mentioned earlier, measuring more than twice and cutting once, or in my case, CNCing once. Uh, also, when you design something on a computer, you don't get the real feel of the live edge because the wood has different colors, different grain variations, curves, knots, bark, and imperfections. With the different sized cutouts, I was able to select which size fit best and also align them so that they don't interfere with any of the other features. Then I met in person with the clients following all necessary safety protocols. I showed them the layout I was planning and the size I was recommending. The one minor adjustment that was done on the spot was the font size of the site number and you'll see it right here in the video. I had the original font of the lower section as well as an extrapolated font cut out and lined up beside each other. In the end, the font size chosen was right in between those two. During the meeting, I also showed the outdoor finishing oil that I'll be using. At the end of the project, the client will get to keep that finishing oil to do some minor maintenance at the beginning or end of each season. And now it's time to CNC. The CNCing was the longest part of the project. I broke it into several chunks and CNC during the waking hours. I know I can leave things to work overnight, but I'd like to keep an eye on things, at least for now. Uh, I divided the work into the site number, the names, the trees, the left side of the tent, the right side of the tent, the fire logs and the fire. Aside from the fire logs and the fire, each of the other parts took roughly 12 hours to complete. On the video, I will only show the final pass of the site number, but you can get the idea of how everything else went. And now for the customary classical music moment. After minor sanding to remove any traces of the center lines and any burrs, it was time to finish the project. And this was the case where I took the time to set up the camera, checked all angles, rehearsed all the movements, and forgot to click the record button. And I did that twice. So what you're seeing right now is me applying the third coat of finish. Sadly, you missed seeing how a piece of dusty log turns into a vibrant work of art. The finishing oil is Prato Verde Spareo Zero, which is an oil emulsion. It is made from several oils, but it is applied like a regular varnish and forms a skin finish on top of the wood for a long-lasting effect. And this brings another successful project to a conclusion. If you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can get notified of my next video upload. Also, follow me on all social media channels. The links are in the description. Now, let's end with a few images. <laughs>